Hey guys and girls, it's Ken and Gina here from OK Portugal and welcome to another episode of Portugal Farm Life. We're not on the farm as you can probably tell, we're taking you guys on a little bit of a road trip today. It's an absolutely beautiful day, it's autumn and it's 27 degrees, the sky is blue, it's absolutely stunning and so we thought, you know what, we've got to go out and about, we've got to do a little bit of exploring. But I do want to talk about the farm and what's happening on the farm. It's October, it's autumn, so there's been a little bit of rain and just in a short space of time things went from being all dry and dusty to being lovely green and luscious again. So we are going on a little bit of a road trip today. Now this is a place where we've actually been before but we went very briefly. Um, the reason why we came here, it was about a year ago and this is where we got Mimosa, our little Serra de Estrella mixed puppy from. We are in Linares which is a municipality of Sela Rica de Beira in the district of Guarda Central Portugal. And Linares de Beira, which is the village where we currently are, is a 12th century medieval village that was founded in 1169 by King Afonso Henriques. Now, in the background is the castle of Linares, and it was built in a Romano-Gothic architectural style, and it's classified as a national monument. And this is one of the main reasons why we came here. We're going to go and check it out. One of the first things you notice when you pull up here is this gigantic castle. You can see how they've built this on a whole bunch of granite rock. And this castle is really old, hundreds and hundreds of years old. And you can see it's a really stable foundation. There are some cracks happening in the, in the walls there, but I mean, you know. Well, it's quite old. It is. <laughs> yeah. It's almost as old as us. You're not doing a property viewing now. <laughs> yeah. I'll definitely get a structural engineer to have a look at those cracks. <laughs> yeah. Oh, look at that. Okay. Is that half past? Well, it's actually 1.34. Um, so it's a couple of minutes slow, but you can forgive it. It's, it's, it's yeah. you know, it's getting on in, you know, it's getting on in time a bit. So today we have a 12th century castle for you guys, uh, set in Celerico de Beira. It's got an asking price of about 10 million euros. Quite good access. <laughs> Pretty good access, yeah. Although if you want to visit the castle and you're in a wheelchair, you've got no chance. Yeah, yeah. Unless you have like a sort of four-wheel drive wheelchair option. Yeah, so on a serious note, um, there's, it's not going to be possible to get here in a wheelchair by the looks of it. Um, but maybe they have another gate somewhere that's a little bit more accessible. But if you're able-bodied, it's not too much of a, of a trick. Uh, if you're coming up here in a, in a suit of armour though, and lugging around a massive sword, it might be a little bit tricky. Is that your day wear? Yeah, yeah. Wow, so look at this. Hey? Beautiful thick granite walls, lovely arch. So this is the first time that we've been here, so we're still figuring it out as we go along. Um, now I believe the castle is made up of these two towers, and one of them is a keep, and the other one is the clock tower. I'm guessing the one, I'm guessing this will be the keep, because I'm guessing the clock tower is the one with the bell, and that's the bell up there that just tolled. Do you think we can get through that door, or? We can go and try. Yeah, let's go and have a look. These are very noisy little walkways. Oh wow, look at these views. No. Oh. Okay, so this door behind us is locked. It's probably a good thing though. Um, you know, this is an ancient castle. The last thing you want to do is just have it open to randoms. Um, but yeah, let's go and check out the rest.
We're at an altitude of 800 meters. As you can see in the background here, there's some amazing views that stretch for miles and miles and miles. And this castle was basically part of the Beira defense system. And they used it to protect the eastern flank of the territory from marauders and invaders and things like that. So the castle is contained between two different stone wall structures. This is the first structure here, or the first of the walls. And this building over here, I believe, is the clock tower. And the one over here, this is the keep. So we're standing in the arch. So there would have been big gates and big you know, doors here. Um, now this is the other stone walled section. And these walls are, well, they, they seem to be a lot smaller. I'm not sure if it's because they've been eroded over time or what the story is. But this over here is the keep. Now this is the main, like the main building. It's a rectangular shape and it's the older of the two towers. And this was built in the 12th century by the Knights of the, sorry, by the Order of the Knights Templar. And uh, it was the highest point built for defense. And if you look along the front of the building here, you can see there's arrow slits where they used to fire arrows at people that were invading or trying to take the castle. And over here you can just see for miles and miles and miles. So I just did a little Wikipedia search and apparently these balconies that you see over there and there, those were actually added later in the 14th century during the Gothic transformations. And the clock tower was added in the 13th century under the Gothic reforms by King Dennis and King Ferdinand. I'm just walking around in this green area here inside the castle walls and I've come across this little statue, like a little stargazer. I wonder what the story is with this. It's looking up at the heavens and it must be very old. And there's another one just over here, although I can't quite see the face in it. Maybe someone can tell us in the comments if these have any sort of historic uh, meaning or symbolism. So one of the amazing things about visiting places like this in Portugal are finding these really old medieval castles and buildings and things like that. You know, where I come from in uh, Cape Town, South Africa, I think the oldest buildings that we have there are about from 1652. So, you know, you look at something like, like this and it's a lot, a lot, lot older, 500 years. So now you can get a really good idea of the, of the main walled area and you can start to see some of these huge granite rocks that all these walls and things are built on. It makes me wonder what kind of action this castle must have seen back in the days. You know, people like invading or trying to siege. Um, yeah, it's pretty incredible. I mean, from up here, you definitely have a very privileged position and a very privileged spot. I can't imagine it's gonna be very easy for people to, you know, to try and scale these walls here. I reckon I could probably climb up there. <laughs> but it's one thing climbing up there, it's another thing getting up there and pulling out a sword and you know, fighting a whole bunch of people. As we walk across this side of the wall, in front of us, we start to see the village of Linares de Beira. And I think we should have a walk around and see just what kind of history and stories this place has to tell. I've just noticed as you come up into the village on the main road, there's a signpost here that's got different languages, but they've also got a QR code down here. And to read that, what you need to do is open your phone, use your camera if you've got a smartphone, take a photo of it and it will give you a link to a website. And that website walks you around the village and it takes the old mayor from the castle days, walks you around the village to give you different points of interest which is interesting. <laughs> so we actually came here without having lunch. It's half past two now. We're starting to get hungry. Ken's getting hangry. I'm not getting hangry, I'm, <laughs> I'm all right. But I was starving. And in the background here, this place is a really nice restaurant called Cova de Loba. Cova de Loba. And, and the website says it's open. Well, yeah, the website said it would be open today. So we really wanted to have lunch here. They even do like little picnic baskets and stuff. And we wanted to grab like a picnic basket and go and chill out, but Unfortunately, it's closed. So we're gonna to have to make ultimate arrangements. Uh, I think there's a little Mercado over there or a little cafe. This is one of the best parts about these little villages are these streets, all these beautiful granite stone walls. So I think over here, we, we should be able to get something to drink and uh, maybe, uh, maybe like a little pastry or a snack or something like that. So let's go and check it out. Now Gina and I are actually at a place where we came about well, a year ago. Yeah. And um, it's a cafe called, Cap well, Cafe Mimoso. And actually, Cafe Mimoso is the place where we met Maria, 
And Maria is the lady that gave us our puppy, Mimosa. And I didn't actually realize that this place was called Mimosa, so it's, um, yeah. Maybe it wasn't our subconscious and that's why we called it that. But uh, Maria, who's in the background here, she's gonna be moving to a new cafe. <laughs> what is the name of the new cafe? Cafe de Maria. Café de Maria, okay, and that's going to be in the same area. Okay, excellent. So yeah, so we're going back in history here, and uh, and we're having Not a very just with the castle. Yeah, <laughs> and also um, we're having a very tasty little tasty. Thanks, Maria. Thank you. So we just finished our little snack. Um, we need to get some some blood sugar going, and uh, we're going to take you for a little walk around uh, this village because it's really, really beautiful. So hopefully we're going to be able to capture some of this so that you guys at home can see exactly how cool this place is. There's a, there's a little Flintstones house with a little chimney coming out of the out of the granite. <laughs> We're just having a wander around these beautiful streets. I just love how some of these houses are actually built into the rocks. I mean, look at the size of this huge granite boulder. And look how it actually goes inside all of these beautiful buildings. This is, um, this is gonna be Maria's new place. Maria's so, cafe. Maria's cafe, yeah, it's just busy being built at the moment. And if you wanna find it, it's next to this Plurinho. thing, this thing here, which is called a Plurinho. Plurinho, or in English, I think it's called a Pellery. And they used to punish people there. They used to hang people. They used to hang people? Hang, like, no, like hang or fish. Oh, okay. So thanks to Maria for showing us around this little bit here. I kind of know a little bit more history about these things and I'm going to tell you about that history now. So what we're looking at here, this structure, it's got three steps going up, it's all in granite and this is the forum. And in medieval times, this is where all of the distinguished gentlemen of um, Linares de Beiro would come and they would sit around here at this little table and basically they would make all sorts of decisions here. This is where they would judge people, they would make administrative decisions and things like that. Like that. Exactly like that, yeah. And. Uh, in the background here, this is called the pillory, and they would actually tie people up to that pillory. So there's like a, a place just on the side there where there used to be a cast iron ring, and they would handcuff people to that ring where they would await their punishment. Now, it does say in the history books that they never actually killed anyone here, but they did used to punish them. So I don't know if people got flogged or whipped or something like that. And just to the right here, this is the old prison. Now on a day like today, it's 27 degrees, it's all nice and sunny, you know, sitting in the forum area here. But I imagine if this is where they used to make all of their decisions and stuff, back in the days, this probably uh, was a very cold, chilly spot. I mean, there actually is a wind blowing past us here. Um, and so I was joking around with Gina earlier and saying that I don't think that they made many decisions in the cold weather. I think they made quick decisions. Yeah, really quick decisions. Guilty. <laughs> so this is just an example of what happens when you're a bad, a bad girlfriend? <laughs> no, it wasn't me. I didn't murder again. <laughs> yeah, so that's that little. Uh, this is where they had that ring, and you'd be chained there. I reckon people have pulled it out so much. Yeah. Now I wonder if um, if you used to get whipped up there, because if you were up there, I mean, this is quite high up. I guess you like you'd have to have like a really long whip, and we're you know. I think it's high up so everyone can laugh at you because you'll be naughty. Yeah, it's the naughty step. Yeah. Hola, buen tarde. <laughs> so this is the um, the prison, and uh, I've tried to actually take this video shot about twenty times now, and every time I try and do it, a car drives past. I'm actually quite amazed because this is a small town or like, like a small mountain village, and for some reason there seems to be more traffic here than there is in Castello Branco, <laughs> which is really bizarre. But anyway, hopefully after this car's left, I can tell you a little bit about this prison. The only real sort of remnant that shows that it's a prison are the bars on this bottom left window here. And uh, there's a coat of arms just above, just up the top here, um, which are the coat of arms of Queen Maria, who reigned between 1777 and 1816. And in medieval times, this was a prison. 
but uh, it was also once a school and teacher's house, and it now houses the Linares Parish Council. Apparently, if you do go inside, and I think that you can, it looks like there's a, a post office in there. Apparently, they've got some uh, decorative pieces, like some historical pieces and things like that. So just up here is a tourist office and we've just popped in and you get a map and it's free. You don't have to pay for it. So if you don't like using the app on your phone, you can have like a paper map. Excellent. Yeah. And we're just up the road from where the prison is. The prison's just around the corner. Yes. So when you get out of prison, you, you can, can get one of these maps. Get out of prison and get to the tourist office. Exactly, yeah. These little winding streets are so pretty. Wow, look at this place. It's quite a low arch here. What does it say? This is the House of the Jew. So yeah, if you want to um, learn more about that, hit pause now and read the text. But here we have this very low walkway. Oh, that's so pretty. As you can see, it's not for tall people. Oh wow, and then behind me, look at this house. So, okay. From Linhares. Okay. Did you grow these on your farm? I grew these on my farm, yes. Nice. And you just leave them to dry in the sun? I let them to dry, and then when they dry, I crack them. Yeah. Amazing. It's quite a nice job because you can eat while you work. Yes. <laughs> a tasty snack. Tasty and healthy. Yes. So I've just figured out why there's so much traffic in this particular point. There's a big hotel over here. So if you do want to come and stay in the area, there's a big hotel over here called Inatel. So now we are by the El Macrebs Road. So if you want to read more about that, uh, do hit pause now and have a read. Uh, essentially this road that we're just about to walk on here is an old Roman road. Now some people say that it's an old Roman road, some people say that it was from the 12th century. Um, but it's about four meters wide and you can see there's these giant granite boulders that actually make up like the surface of the road. And you can see there's huge rocks, huge granite rocks. And this stretches all the way down there. They say that this is part of the Star Way and uh, it was a Roman road that was between Merida and Braga. I'm not really sure where those two places are and how long that road is, but I imagine that this is an old, an old Roman track and you can imagine all of the feet that passed, all of the carts, all of the donkeys and horses and everything that would come and visit this, this village. So now Gina is about seven foot five, generally speaking. No, this is a really short doorway. <laughs> Don't bang your head. <laughs> yeah, I think maybe people in medieval times were a bit shorter. I definitely recommend to come into this little town to have a look around. It's beautiful and I don't think the camera is going to do it justice. And there is a little bit of wheelchair access with this road, but it just goes around in a circle. So I don't know if you'd get down to see all the things, but it really is worth coming to have a look. That's a good one. So we came, we saw, we conquered. <laughs> yeah. Well, not like the Romans. Well, we walked some yeah. hills. Yeah. But now it's time for us to head on back because we've got some hungry doggies at home looking after the farm. It's time for them to get fed. And uh, yeah, it's been an awesome day over here. Ciao, Maria. Ciao. Ciao, bye. Hasta luego. Yeah. Ciao, ciao. And you. So definitely do come and visit her um, cafe. And uh, what did she say it was called? Cafe um, Maria. I think it was Cafe Maria or something. Yeah. yeah but uh, I'm going to put the name up on the screen. And it's right next to that. Pillory. That pillory, yeah. So and the prison. So if you're naughty and you don't go, yeah. you end up in prison. Exactly, yeah. So <laughs> go and check out her cafe. It's opening in about two weeks from this uh, video.